So as you can see, when it comes to muscle recovery, it's not just about how much you recover, but how long it takes you to recover. Hey Jeff, did you see about this new study about uh, weightlifting and stunting growth? I mean, what a load of bullshit, right? Look at this growth. Holy mother f***er. What? What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So today we're gonna to talk about whether or not weightlifting stunts your growth, right? Because this is something that I'm sure you've been told either by your pediatrician or by your mother or your father or you've read it somewhere online, but somewhere you've encountered the fact that weight training is going to stunt your growth if you started too early. I wanna make sure that I set the record straight. So we do have to look around. And when we do, traditionally we see that the guys that excel in weight training, the guys that excel in Olympic lifting, even some of the power lifters, they're of shorter stature. There's no denying that. But I will tell you this, is it sort of a cause and effect relationship here? Is it the chicken and the egg? Did the training itself make these guys stay at a stunted height when they got older? Were they being held back in their development, in their height, because of their participation as a youth in training? Or are they in the positions they are, the top of their sport, because being short provided them some advantages? And right there, we have to sort of acknowledge that, guys, that we know that because the mechanical leverages are gonna be in your favor the shorter you are, because we know that the distance having to be traveled, even on a bench press, when you have shorter arms, is going to be to your advantage. We realize that it's more of the latter. It's not that it was causing this, it's that these guys excelled in that sport because of this. Now, this is where it all originates, though. This fear is surrounded by the fact that when we get damage to the growth plates in our long bones, and the long bones are the bones of your tibia, your lower leg, your femur, your upper arm here, the humerus, it has a softened area at each end of the bone, okay? And the growth plate is a non-calcified area, more cartilage-based area of the bone that allows the bone to continue to lengthen over time as you grow. Ultimately, what happens after you've reached puberty is those those areas begin to calcify and fill in, no longer being adaptable in size, and that's sort of the end length of how big your bones are going to be. But because they're non-calcified, because they're cartilage-based, they're basically susceptible to some more injury because they're soft. Now, let's look at these injuries, because this is what's really, really important when it comes to determining whether or not there's a load of crap when we're talking about weightlifting causing damage here. The first type of injury that we get to this growth plate is one that actually goes right along the growth plate. And we call these fractures of these growth plates, all right? Right along the same line, parallel to that growth plate. The second one would actually involve a fracture here and then up into the more proximal portion of this bone, right, where it fractures along that line. The third type would actually come around on the area of the growth plate as well and then fracture down through the bottom, more distal portion of that bone. Then we have the type that actually crosses all three areas. It crosses the top portion, the bottom portion, and through the growth plate itself. And then the final part here, if I'm in the way, is we have this sort of crush injury of the actual growth plate right along here, but it's crushed from the top down. Now, when you look at these types of injuries, you have to ask yourself, which of these activities that you're seeing me doing here, this squat, or this deadlift, or this bench press, right, tricep pushdown, which of these is causing these stresses to these bones? Which? They're not, we're not getting these types of fractures and stresses applied to these long bones of our body. If anything, we're creating supportive stresses by loading our, our muscles up and loading our bones and creating some, some weight-bearing ground reaction forces through these long bones. It's a good thing. But none of them are creating these fractures. These are the types of things that occur in contact sports like football like repetitive contact sports, like jumping repetitively in basketball, or more commonly with kids, it's in accidents, things like snowboarding accidents or skateboarding accidents, things where you get these, these contorted impacts and forces that are impacting these bones that create these types of fractures. And I gotta tell you this, even when that happens, maybe only in about 20 to 30% of those cases where we actually have damage to these growth plates, is it actually gonna cause stunted growth? Most commonly, it's these real severe crush injuries that are gonna cause that stunted growth. So again, you have to ask yourself whether or not this is even a real thing. 
Beyond that, we have some things called you know, stress fractures that you've probably heard of. And stress fractures are very common, especially in gymnastics. But even in that case, guys, when you look at this, a stress fracture is going to occur more commonly, not in the growth plate areas, but more in the bones themselves. Here in the transverse processes of the lumbar spine, when a gymnast does a lot of repetitive, ex excessive extension through their low back, you can actually get fractures here. But again, that's not something that's related to the growth plate. So it's not really a concern. Now, where is some of this advice, though, that comes to you that says, well, you shouldn't train then until you've reached puberty? You know where that really comes from, guys? It comes from the fact that hormonally, you're not going to benefit that much from your training if you don't have the hormones to support the efforts you're trying to create. If you're trying to create more muscle and you're an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old, good luck. It ain't really going to happen. It's sort of wasted effort. So those recommendations aren't based off of growth plate fears, although some pediatricians still think that because, again, they're stuck in the, in the ways of their older, older thinking and sort of believing in this myth. It's not about the growth plate. It has nothing to do with that. It's just supporting your efforts with a better hormonal environment to actually allow you to take advantage of your efforts. So what my recommendation is, is when you're growing up, as you're approaching your teens, as you're reaching puberty, there is no problem with learning the right way to train. And one of the best things you could do is actually implement a technique bar if that's what you're going to do. And if you're going to eventually wind up training with real weights, learning how to manipulate a barbell at an early age is going to be very beneficial to you. A technique bar is going to be a very light load, something that, that any young adolescent, let's say 10, 11, 12, can actually use very safely. The most important thing that you should be learning to do at that point is to develop your technique to develop the movement patterns. Whether you train with a bar or not, there's nothing stopping you from learning how to correctly lunge, how to correctly pull, how to correctly push vertically. Right? All the things we just talked about in a recent video, those key foundational movement patterns, how to squat, how to hinge, these are all key movements that you need to learn how to do and then eventually learn how to load. But I will show you again, these movements that we showed here before are not going to result in these types of stresses and therefore the danger to growth plates is not real. So don't hold back from training. Don't hold back from learning how to train properly because you feel that stunted growth is in your future, guys. As a matter of fact, if you wind up being shorter just because mom and dad gave you some bad genetics, keep this as a positive. You might wind up excelling down the road in the sport of weightlifting if that's something that even interests you at all. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for science-based training programs that show you how to do this the proper way, head over to athletenext.com and look for the program that matches your specific goals. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know also what I'm going to cover. And if you haven't already done so, guys, please click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.